That Jeffrey, I thought it was all right. That was tough. Yeah, How is that for you, Jeffrey? Right. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs>
in. The drone comes in one day. day too early, doesn't no, it? No, it doesn't come in too late. late. Oh, we well, dismiss it. Come in yeah. second night. And also, it sounds before the number sound. I had to, well, you can do it and separation, didn't it? But it didn't have it there. It was like a bit blurry, a bit, a bit sort of. Yeah, well, I thought the moon was a bit loud. You know? Yeah, that's it's the next song. Uh -huh, yeah, but it's still the drum is in the wrong beat. But John, do you want to leave it? No, do you want to do it again? Sort of thing, or should we do it again? Good. Can you just yeah, take right. the back, take the back out? Let's do that again. Let's, let's do it again. Let's just do another take. Again. The number's good though, isn't it? Yeah, let's do another take. Out. Get it right this time, lads. <laughs> For me, I like working with a gang of people. I like a little team. I like the kind of fun of all having a cup of tea together, getting your heads down and working on a piece of music. I've never been a solo performer, so it's natural for me to kind of find myself a group. I also like to work sometimes uh, on my own. I haven't done any of that since the McCartney LP, um, where I worked on my own and just played all the instruments myself. That, for me, is more fun than anything. I mean, that's something I just I really enjoy to do, you know, because there's no one else to worry about. I don't have to think about anyone. It's just like an old professor in his, la in his laboratory. But my ideal thing would be to have a steady group that works together as a team, so you get the team thing, where there's enough looseness so that any one of us at any time can go off and do whatever he wants to do. tougher I say forget it but it's oh it's definitely getting easier. It used to be really tough. Yeah but actually it was never really tough because um, once you know the chords you're all right. But it's not it's not just a musical thing I mean it's whether people want you to be around they sort of. Oh you, you know, feel inferior sometime and all that but you've got to always just tell yourself well I know I'm seeing so often. <laughs> Oh, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. 
If I hadn't been pushed by my old man, if he didn't take me there to a, the Jackie Cooper School of Dancing, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't have started. Because I was not interested in going. I was interested in music, yeah, but I wasn't interested in going through all the crap that you have to, you have to go through to get there. And I was performing when I was 12 years old. I was performing for. A whole load of people at the Birmingham Institute. And I didn't even know what I was doing up there, you know. I had a cheeky time, I thought, well, yeah, why not? What about Does your chewing gum lose its flavour on the bedpost? Put the house down. Well, that's not the case. Well, I'm sure you can get to the bottom of that. Yeah, but you don't have to but I got it together and I wanted to do it, you know, getting up before school, practice, coming back to school, practice, practice before you go to bed, everything, you know, just getting your rudiments together. And uh, they saw I was keen, so they said, right, there's nothing happening in Scotland, so we have to go down to London if we're going, if, if the lie's going to get anywhere. It's the best music I've ever put down in my life. Really? Yeah, no doubt about that. I want, I want to be able to produce a monster album with Paul and the band and, and, and be proud of it. That's what I want. You know, to be appreciated on record. I've been playing as long as anybody else in the band. When did you first start playing? Twelve. But earlier than twelve. I was started playing when I was eleven. I was always playing with people much older than me.
first started writing, I used to write in a little notebook and I would just find out exactly what note the note was. Say it was an A going to a B. And I would just write the lyrics out and then write A and B. Just write the actual names of the notes over the lyrics. Um, as things have progressed, I end up now, mainly if I need to remember a thing, I use a tape recorder these days. In one, on one hand, I'm trying to put down the, the kind of things that happen to me in my life. And on the other hand, I just write like a hack songwriter. Some of them are just totally imagination. But of course, you know, Freud would say they're all connected with your life anyway, so hang about. on your own and it's hard to get confidence back again. But yeah. don't you feel a bit like that? I mean don't you feel a bit like Of course. You win the many players. Exactly, that's why I know exactly what it feels. a rock and roll image. Well, any band that goes up and down the motorways and it's a, a gigging band, we spend all those hours locked up in the back of the truck or whatever, and then you get to the gig and it's a bit of a release to do the gig and then there's all the hours back home, you kind of, um, you get a sort of pent up emotion. And <laughs> what happened was they did it, we got a, a Duff boarding house and um, I don't know how it all came about, but anyway, <laughs> Billy's bed, Billy's bed got nailed to the ceiling. <laughs>
14-year-old looking at, at music, Ladies looking at it for a career, the, uh, the obvious thing was kind of Sinatra, to you, Tony Bennett, you know, to do the big singer bit. In cabaret. I wrote a, a lot of stuff thinking I was going to end up in the cabaret, that one to Ella. not realizing that uh, rock and roll was particularly going to happen. Uh, when I was 14, I mean, there wasn't that much of a clue that it was going to happen. So um, I wrote Suicide and a couple of others, like When I'm 64, and as, as very cabaret-type numbers. Mother, let's be in love with each other. 
each other. Tonight is the flight of the butterfly, and it's leaving at half past ten. So when I heard that she was coming to London, um, I thought I'd roll myself in on a dinner invitation, and rather than take around a bottle of champagne, I took her a song. There you go. You look a little lonely. Maybe I can meet you. Tell me where to reach you, and I'll give you a ring. I take you to the pictures. Miss a second feature Lord, I can't believe my eyes I must be dreaming Give me your number I'll give you a ring You look a little lonely Maybe I can reach you Tell me where to meet you And I'll give you a ring I'll take you to the pictures Or miss a second feature Lord, I can't believe my eyes, I must be dreaming Give me your number, I'll give you a ring Oh man, I know I won't be lonely anymore Me and my phone, we're gonna call Maybe I can meet you Tell me where to reach you And I'll give you a ring I'll take you to the pictures We'll miss a second feature Lord, I can't believe my eyes I must be dreaming Give me your number I'll give you a ring Oh, give me your number I'll give you a ring
Yeah, it depends. On some of them, Paul, show me what to play. On other things, I'll just get the chords, find out what the chords are, and sort of pick it up from there. Because it's you with you. If you don't do it, nobody can do it for you. His old man had his own band. No middle class crap. You've only got to go to Liverpool and mix with, well, I was there this new year. He mixed with his family. I'm telling you. His family are as talented as it is. And they, because they sit around the piano and they have a bloody ball. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And that's where he got it from. I had two friends that I used to, there's a music tower where I went down to the high school. And we used to cut classes and go, there was a piano in this little room, it was great, it's like being in an attic. And we used to cut classes, you know, sneak out and go meet up there and sing Blue Moon and things like that. It's purely something I did. I think when we left school, I think they sort of went on Ted Max Amateur or one of those things, you know. I remember sending in postcards for them. But it, no, it was just for fun, really. I, I've never been very ambitious. But uh, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Hannigan, one, two.
Now, I've never learned to notate in music. Um, if I can, I like to be very kind of close to the arranger. You know, producer and an arranger is a, a big help. But it's always basically comes back down to you yourself. Didn't let die. Take. 